I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. I'm back. It's Keith Chow. It's Brittany Monet. I'm Dominic Ma. Thank you guys for holding it down last week. I, I almost feel like I don't need to return. You guys should just take over the podcast. No, you get to your t- turn to celebrate Father's Day and play with your action figures whenever <laughs> yeah, you like, Keith. exactly. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I, I enjoyed the rabbit holes and tangents, the, the multiverse of mad segues, as it were. Yes. Where you talked about literally... Everything yeah. but Loki. I mean, despite, despite, we despite, about despite Loki. best effort, I know. <laughs> we, it all came back to Loki. Loki caused all that to happen, you could say, out of chaos. And, I mean, despite Freddy's best efforts, I still don't really understand Lost, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> so, so good. I always, I I always like to try. Yeah, so it was, it was really fun to hear you guys talk about everything under the sun. We got more stuff under the sun to talk about this week, which is crazy. There's another episode of Loki. And then like 7,000 trailers dropped over the last week. Yeah. I don't know if you got a chance to see all of them. but Yes, and there's one that I know you didn't mention in our group chat, but I wanted to talk about was The Harder They Fall with Regina King, Idris or so Idris Western, Elba. Right? Yeah, the Western, yeah, but it's yeah, all yeah, like yeah. black people playing all the cowboys and like outlaws. And right. Stuff. Well, that that trailer dropped after I oh, listed right all the trailers that dropped this week. Okay. <laughs> just so yeah, many I watched that trailer like twice, <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that one, just in case you know someone's wonder. The other thing I just want to touch on real quick, it would be remiss to not mention this at the very least, because I know for the last year and a half we've been talking about you know movies that stream and what happens to theaters, and now that we're in this quasi post pandemic space where theaters are opening you know quiet place a couple of weeks ago made at that point record 50 million dollars and that was like a big deal mm-hmm. you know in the heights came out was supposed to be a big deal it kind of petered out yeah. at the box office it's sad that it did <laughs> yeah i know that was supposed to be the one everyone comes back relative, to the theater for man. well there was a movie that just came out that brought butts back into theaters and into space apparently <laughs> It was the ninth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. Tenth if you count Hobbs and Shaw, but I don't know how many people do count Hobbs hey, and Shaw. Hey, Hobbs and Shaw is actually really good. Well, part of the reason people don't count Hobbs and Shaw is because of Shaw, because of what Shaw not only did to Han, but how the uh, Fast family welcomes Shaw to the cookout. Mm. And they rectified all of that with F9 and the return of the homie Sung Kang, who I talked to for Southern Fried Asian, by the way, so go check that out. But uh, F9 made $70 million at the box office. Yes. With people like still social distancing, still wearing masks, Canada's still not even open yet. That's crazy if you think about how does that movie make seventy million dollars? It's Fast and the Furious. Yeah, there's Fast and Furious is super popular. It is. And I like I know there's some people like to hate on like, eh, they're stupid movies with cars and action. I'm like, no, but they're fun. Some people just like movies that are fun and entertaining and makes them feel good for an hour or two hours whatever like i don't think people understand that and it's like there's all different people of different races in all the fast and the furious movies and it's a movie that even like just did it from the beginning the, of the franchise you know so i feel like it feels authentic in the fast and the furious they're not forcing anything because you know and i don't know it's one of those franchises where i feel like it hits almost all not all the boxes but you know without like it feeling forced and they're fun, so I just feel like people just stop complaining, except that Fast and the Furious is one of the greatest franchises of all time. It is. It's not the force in the Fast and the Furious. I, I concur. It's always been a pointedly multicultural ensemble, and that's one of the great things about it. Mm-hmm. And you know, In front of and behind the camera, yes. too. That's the other yeah. thing that Fast and Furious... You know, it's people talked about how Hollywood studios will not bank on actors of color to lead franchises because they are risky bets, you know... John Boyega is not going to be popular in China, so let's minimize him in the Star Wars poster. Or so and so can't be cast because mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson is a bigger star, <laughs> and therefore she needs to play the Japanese lady. Mm-hmm. Like that argument that only white people are safe box office bets has been blown out of the water for twenty years because Fast and the Furious has been one of the biggest franchises yes. of all time, with as you said, a very multicultural cast very multicultural set of directors and every time it comes out if you watch the first fast and furious mm-hmm. <laughs> and compare it to the ninth fast and furious it's like 
the evolution of the series is Rick Yoon. fascinating. Mm. Is... Rick Yoon. Yeah. Yes. I watched that horrible James Bond movie for him when I was, I don't know how old, because I had loved him in Fast and the Furious. I'm like, ooh, he's playing the villain in that James Bond movie. I hate that movie. Uh, <laughs> Wait, which, which one is that? Was that Tomorrow Never Dies? Uh, no, the one the, is that the one with the ice hotel and stuff? And I think Holly Berry's in it too. And I'm pretty sure Madonna <laughs> oh, did a really? song for the movie. Oh, oh Die, Die Another, Another Day? Day. Wow. That was yeah, a, that's a deep like, Bond cut. He's like the villain. He's the villain in it. That is literally the only reason why I watched that movie. Tomorrow Never Dies was one of the good Asian James Bond movies. I guess Die Another yeah. Day was one of the bad, bad Asian James Bond movies. <laughs> wow. What a good pull. No, Keith, you're completely right. All that stuff about whether you can cast a person who's not white and how to play overseas, all that stuff is completely wrong. Completely wrong. It's not even worth thinking about. Because, again, Fast Furious, it's not really like the actor forward piece. It's not on mm-hmm. the basis of its stars. It's an ensemble that is appealing. They'll recognize it. But, you know, it's the whole mood that it creates with the action set pieces and the vibe of the cars that is popular in- internationally. I'm not saying put cars in front of people, but when you put all that stuff together, it's like, no, we don't really care so much whether people are white or black in it. We want the movie to be like a whole fun thing. Mm-hmm. And and I think that it does prove that point, And it's great that you mentioned that. Yeah, I mean, I just always thought it was a case study whenever, you know, a studio exec or whoever, as matter of fact, says such and such person cannot, you know, Aaron Sorkin famously said there are no Asian movie stars. That's why we can't have an Asian guy play the lead in this particular movie. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And, Aaron Sorkin write a movie. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, that's the other thing, too. It's like the, the property itself, to your point about Fast and Furious, you know, the property itself is what puts butts in seats. You could literally cast anyone mm-hmm. in those movies. It's the It's the franchise. And that's... Hollywood is so franchise driven nowadays that you can literally cast anyone in those films. And this is why I like give people of color opportunities. And, you know, I'm, I've made this point also several times that it's only people of color that have to like prove that their box office draws. Mm-hmm. Right. Because white guys get to fail <laughs> time again at the box office until they become a movie star. Like Ryan Reynolds had like six attempts at well, bat Ryan, before he Ryan hit Reynolds, with Deadpool. I feel like is a different case because Ryan Reynolds is actually one of the few talented white dudes out there, but they kept <laughs> casting him in those like, you know, rom-coms that made people feel like he well, wasn't good. that's what good. I'm saying though. Like if you if that was John Cho who had like six rom-coms that failed, oh, yeah. they're not going to give him a seventh but chance, I you know what I'm saying? every Ryan Reynolds movie except for Green Lantern. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't mean to choose the one yes, white guy. the one white guy that I will fight <laughs> <Sorry>. for. <laughs> no, but like but you know what I'm saying? Like I I used to make like Chris Hemsworth as my butt of that joke because take him out of a marvel movie he hasn't had a hit you know what i'm saying but like he's a movie star because he's thor Mm -hmm. you know yes it's not because chris hemsworth's a movie star it's because marvel is a franchise that people will watch no matter what unjustly judged for black hat or whatever that movie was (laughs) well that's exactly right right you put chris hemsworth in a in a movie that's not marvel and it fails all of a sudden it's not like his career is toast right but again you put like a black actor or Asian actor or Latin actor in that role and it fails it's like well yeah. see I told you you can't yeah, cast people worry of about color. the quote unquote stigma and all that all yes, that thinking yes. is just wrong it's just all wrong it's all wrong and that's thanks to Fast and the Furious I had to defend Ryan Reynolds from white people so that's how you know right people <laughs> like just didn't think took him as a joke like I remember when he got cast as Deadpool and there was these white people who I was like friends with from like uh they were in my theater class and they were just like oh he's so bad why would you cast him I'm like he is literally made for the role of Deadpool. I'm sorry. I know that the other movie made it seem like he wasn't, but he is amazing. He is talented, and you are going to watch that, like, you know, you're going to be proven wrong. And they're like, no, Brittany, you're just saying that because he's cute. And I'm like, no, he's actually talented. No, and he now is very good are like, but he is too cute. cute to play Deadpool, that, I maintain. But, he's, 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 he's the right personality. <laughs> I don't know if we want to have this fight now. <laughs> I get that. I get, like, in terms of look-wise, yeah, he's too, like, you know handsome but he has the right like acting chops and the personality like i don't know just friends is one of my favorite movies i literally watch that movie like three times a year so speaking of fast nine again i just also want to mention good work (laughs) justin lynn moving that ball forward you know again in the multicultural franchise that is made a zillion dollars all around the world in all sorts of countries and also to uh, Dan Casey, who wrote the screenplay, and I know a little bit from the Sundance Screenwriters Lab way back when. So it's nice to see them come around and keeping the Fast and Furious ball rolling. Yeah, no, it's, it, that's an amazing just journey that the franchise has been on and Justin, right? Like, if you just, one of the things Sung and I talked about on Southern Fried Asian is just like 
when they were making Better Luck Tomorrow, did they ever think that in 20 years they would be part of this, yeah. you know, billion dollar franchise that apparently Better Luck Tomorrow is retroactively a part of because they, you know, they've been, they've always joked that Han in Fast and Furious is the same Han that was in Better yeah. Luck Tomorrow. But and anyway, it has a cool car in it. Wait, is Sun Kang Southern? Yeah, he's from Georgia. Oh, is he from Georgia? I didn't know that. He's from Georgia. Oh, yeah, awesome. so I got him on. I got him on the Southern Fried <laughs> Podcast. Well, well, speaking of you know movies that have all people of color in the cast instead of white people, I want to talk about Snake Eyes because there were a bunch of trailers mm. that came out this week. You know, we mentioned a few of them already. Two of the bigger ones were Shang Chi, the the full trailer. Yes, yes, yes. And Snake Eyes, the full trailer. And and then there was a Suicide Squad trailer and, and a bunch of other stuff. We'll, we'll get to them. Bunch of but I want to I want to have a big Snake Eyes versus Shang Chi fight. No, real quick. <laughs> literally, that would be a good fight. Because, <laughs> because I think part of the problem is that like the way Brittany feels about Ryan Reynolds, I feel about Snake Eyes and Henry <laughs> Golding as Snake Eyes. Whoa, in I particular. love Henry Golding. I think he it. is so beautiful <laughs> and very talented. And like, I am very excited for Snake Eyes. I watched the trailer. Made my mom watch it with me. I'm like, look, it's Henry. So, <laughs> well, so yeah. I mean, there's a couple <laughs> things, right? Like the way that Dominic had mentioned Ryan Reynolds is too pretty to be Deadpool. There is there is definitely an undercurrent of Henry Golding is also too beautiful and not disfigured enough to be Snake Eyes in this Snake Eyes movie. And like, okay, fine. Full disclosure, there are some folks who will remain nameless because I don't think they can talk about it who saw an early screening of the movie. Oh. And I'm not one of them, so I'm going <laughs> to freely talk about it because I didn't sign any NDAs about this. But... The, the sentiment that I've been hearing, and it's not even just the folks who've actually seen the movie, it's people talking about the film, the trailers themselves, G.I. Joe, quote-unquote, fans. And the main complaint is, sure, it's a fun movie, sure, there's a lot of great action, but it's not a G.I. Joe movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. For those of you listening, Dominic just shrugged, and I feel the exact same. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? It's not a G.I. Joe movie. It's not. It's an origin story. Well, right, exactly. Number two... From what I've seen, I, I have not seen any screens, but I've seen the trailers. It's not a G.I. Joe movie. It's an Arash Kage clan movie. And that's all I ever fucking wanted to begin with anyway. So give me give me all the Arash Kage stuff. I don't care that it's not a G.I. Joe movie. So anyway, I say all that to say all my Asian friends who are not so thrilled with Snake Eyes but are like super stoked for Shang-Chi. I'm just, I'm the other, I'm the opposite. <laughs> that second Shang-Chi trailer did nothing for I'm me. I'm like... But mm, I, I'm all in on Snake Eyes. So it doesn't have to be either or. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. No, it doesn't. We have to fight. I'm sorry. We have to fight. I'm... There can only be well, one Asian American martial artist coming I want to see both of them. Don't do this to me. The martial arts movie of Jesus. See, really was, yeah. see now, if it was Snake Eyes versus Black Widow, obviously Snake Eyes is where I'm going. Well, right. I forgot about that other Asian American superhero. against super Black hero. Widow, I'm sorry. I'm picking the other movie. Even if it's Chucky. Like, I don't like Chucky. I'm terrified of Chucky. I will see Chucky <laughs> over watching Black Widow. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so, now where you know your opposite point is, is Chucky. Okay, now that we so set the spectrum. does it make me a bad Asian for not liking the Shang-Chi trailer? I mean, I, I, mean, I just... I, I, no, I, not at all. But let's talk about it. Let's unpack that. I'm curious. I wasn't moved by it at all. Like, I thought I would be more into it I think the teaser, you know, I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I went out and bought all the action figures. But then the, uh, the the full trailer came out and I was just, I don't know, a little underwhelmed. Why is that? One thing is it starts with this, like, sort of classically, like, Asian mystery land. I mean, there's a lot of these, like, sort of Mortal Kombat set design kind of thing. And it seems to be going with the, you know... This is an ancient, ancient, ancient 5,000 years of history kind of vibe, which Chinese people do all the time. <laughs> but, you know, again, that leads to the, you know, sort of forever foreigner stereotype, like everyone is just just fresh off the boat. But I don't, I don't know if that's what you're reacting to. I still like it because there's a guy who just seems like a guy. In contrast, again, with Snake Eyes, that uh, you, you set up this contrast. <laughs> wow, I'm trying to talk about two things at once. Okay, in, in, in Snake Eyes, we'll get to this. It, it, it has a problem of 
Storm Shadow talking in Japanese accent English, right? It it, it, it erases the idea that he was just like a, a JA guy, you know, from Fresno, right. all that shit. And I'm upset about that. So when I contrast that with Shang-Chi, I'm like, well, I like that this guy just seems like a guy, like an Asian American guy, even though he's Canadian. Like, you know, and I even kind of like, like, this is a weird thing to say, but he doesn't... He doesn't have like the chiseled, severe, good looks of a John Cho or like a Daniel Day Kim. He kind of looks just what, like. What are a... you, Weibo? What are you, no, Chinese he... Weibo, no, Dominic? I'm sorry. I, I don't know if that's the Weibo. Simu <laughs> Liu is not attractive. No, the, no, he's a very attractive guy, but he looks more like a dude. Like I can't relate to John Cho. He's too pretty. That's that's my problem. I guess that's my. Sorry. I, I guess I that's I my. Recurring looking, theme. Like he looks like a normal. Even though yes, he's in great shape and he's a good-looking dude, he looks like a guy that you would just see him like you know on the street or like a. a you know, like just a normal dude. I get what you're saying. I feel like Henry Golding and even Andrew Koji, oh, so beautiful. They both just look like they're gods and like, I don't know, that they should be on Mount Olympus and not like amongst yeah. us. <laughs> they are severely good looking. They are like yes. movie star good looking. Although this is not all about looks again. We don't I guess need to it's not about them. looks. <laughs> but they have that look. They do. But okay, back to the Snake Eyes thing for a second. I like... <laughs> So, you know, as you've mentioned many times, Keith, you know, we love the parts of the comic book story written by Larry Hama, where Star of Shadow was a Japanese-American kid from Fresno, and, you know, they were all in this dangerous mission together in Vietnam. And, of course, in the comics, it became he's, you know, Oriental ninja guy, and they never quite explained that. And, of course, it's revealed in the trailers that he is, again, like, Japanese from Japan, speaking with Japanese accent, so they pretty much you know, nix that whole idea again of that he could just be like an Asian American guy and also be a ninja. So it was for me, like I go, it, and then you have Henry Golding, who's, <laughs> I yeah, don't, I think it, he's speaking with a British accent, right? I, like, don't, he's not, I don't know if it's conclusive. American. It's, he, he's <laughs> definitely, he might be just trying to do an American accent. It's not convincing, but in either case, he's, he doesn't seem like an Asian American guy. <laughs> and so it, in a weird way, it's all, it's like almost like, you know, one step forward, two steps back. I feel like as Asian Americans, we sort of lost something and we might get another heavily Asian, you know, something that's meant to look Asian. Like Asian. perpetual foreigner yeah. than, than Asian American. No, I, I get, and I wonder, right. And I've said that about even the teaser where you got to hear a bit of Andrew Koji's accent and it was you know, a little bit more Japanese inflected than I was hoping just because of, you know, as I've mentioned before in the comics and you just mentioned, he's clearly a guy from Fresno. And in the cartoon, he was like, you know, chop sock is not the word, but he's definitely got that like stereotypical Oriental accent. And not that Koji's doing like, you know, cartoon storm shadow. And I feel like in the second trailer where you, you hear a little bit more of Koji's dialogue, it's not as severe as I was worried yeah. about. First of all, both Koji and Golding are British. Yeah. So there's there's just a bit of like British inflection that's like taking over their accents, which is and I wonder if Samara Weaving is just gonna make Scarlet British too. <laughs> just we're just <laughs> yeah, making everybody weird. British. Isn't this a real American hero? <laughs> but I mean you're saying and I'm not I'm not chipping on the, the level of the accents. I mean they're actors they can determine that for themselves. But just like the story itself is is putting Storm Shadow as Japanese from Japan. They're just every, everything's from Japan, and, and that takes out the real, real American part of it. But that said, it's cool in that the, the second trailer you get to see their buddy dynamic going yeah. a lot more, and that's that seems real cool, like a, a a buddy Asian guy action movie. I'm into that. What you're saying about Snake Eyes, I didn't bump against as much as I might have with Shang Chi. I feel like I had maybe that same feeling with the Shang Chi trailer, where it was. Again, to your point about it, feeling less Asian American and more like Oriental mysticism, especially with like the Michelle Yeoh kind of like ancient Chinese secret of your power kind of thing. And there's literal dragons and Destiny lions in and this. Temples and... <laughs> well, that is fine. I was a little, a little underwhelmed. I don't know, Brittany. What? It, <laughs> where do you? I know that you're. You want to just. Why can't we all get along and let's not pit the two Asian American superhero comic book movies against yeah, each other? Yeah, but man, I, can't. I, I think for me, like, I just I I like really cool, fun action films, regardless of like who is starring in it. And then mine is Scarlett Johansson, but <laughs> you know, I I think they both look fun. I don't know much about Snake Eyes or like GI Joe stuff, so based on what I actually know, would be Shang Chi. But I, I don't know. I like the trailer. It looks fun. And there was, I don't know what shot it was. There was one shot that I was like, oh, I was like, I gotta see this. I think it was, 
they're on the field or something. Some dude's... Wait, in Shang-Chi or Snake Eyes? Shang-Chi. And he does some oh. really cool thing with, like, the rings on his arm. And the way it looked, I was just like, oh, I'm oh, Tony, so... Yeah, I'm yeah. still all in it for Tony Leung. Like... I don't know if it was him who did it in the shot. I, I can't remember the exact, like... But it was just this one move that they do that I was just like, this this, this is it. This is for me. I guess if there's one saving grace, right? Like, mm-hmm. Tony Leung is what will get my ass in the theater. You know what I'm saying? Like... I'm not trying to hate on the Shang-Chi movie. Like, I, I, I'm I, still, like, all in as much as possible. I just was a little underwhelmed by... Maybe that's what it... Maybe there wasn't enough Tony Leung in the second trailer to really, like, get me excited. Even though there actually is more because you get to see him in action as the Mandarin and well, not I, just, I also like, think this narrating. has probably been part of the hesitation to bring him into live action is because of, like, the way that Shang-Chi was always written was that, like, you know... His dad is, you know, Fu Manchu. Fu Manchu and all this stuff. And it's, and I think it's hard to, like, for people, for them to do, I think this is why they need more actually, like, Asian people working on this. To, like, have it a little bit more, you know, I guess to feel not as the mystical Asian type of thing. If, you know, I don't know. But I feel like it's harder to, like... Or they're trying to, I don't know if they're trying to, like, be like, how do we navigate this? And I think that's the issue. Yeah. Is having more Asian people behind the scenes probably would have helped, maybe, for you. Well, I mean, they got a director and screenwriter of both Asian American, which is a big, you know, deal for Marvel. But Yeah. Yeah, when they have to do a lot of world building. And, uh, yeah, we, I, 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 I feel like Keith's feelings for Tony Leung sort of approach Brittany's feelings for Ryan Reynolds. I'm not sure if that's a good <laughs> equivalence to make. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're kind of, I mean, you've, you've been fanboying over Tony Long for a while since I was there at Comic-Con when you flipped out in public <laughs> over the casting, you know. What is your t- favorite Tony Long movie or two favorite Tony Long movies? Express. Movie? Oh, yeah, that movie's great. Yeah. Beautiful thing. For sure. I was just curious. I wanted to talk about that. Well, movie. and there's, and I mean, basically any Wong Kar Wai Tony Long movie, because I was going to say In the Mood for Love is probably my second favorite Is Tony this Lung his movie. first heavily... English speaking role. This is role? His only sure. English speaking role. Oh, so I don't think he's ever spoken English. So it's anymore. an unknown quantity, you know. And I don't yeah. want you to be too have have really high hopes and be, you know, <laughs> have your high hopes not met. <laughs> well, you know, it, but his English isn't a problem. Like he's the guy narrating yeah, both fucking trailers, about... you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's going to do decent. I don't know. I just feel like it will because that's actually the movie that I'm like, yeah, I'm paying for that. That's the first Marvel movie I'm mm. paying for. So. I'm going to probably see it a couple times. <laughs> well, good for you, Brittany. We got to do stuff like that. We got to put the money where our mouth is. Yeah, no, I, I, and it's my fault for pitting Snake Eyes against Shang-Chi, but I know that, you know, both trailers kind of debuted around the same time, and I was so stoked for the Snake Eyes trailer that maybe I'm just taking, I'm just being resentful yeah. because people are not as happy about Snake Eyes. Oh, as, no, which is fine. I want them to be. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, Snake Eyes is a cooler character. Snake Eyes is a cooler character than Shang-Chi. It's just like less people know about him because he's, less people are G.I. Joe nerds than, than our Marvel nerds. Right, right, right. And, um, but we should also be wary because, uh, again, just on the strict box office point, like, because they shifted everything around, Shang-Chi is opening in a, in a less than optimal window for movies. You know, it's coming out of, what is it, like, September. beginning of September? September? It's September 3rd. Yeah, that's, yeah. and great for everyone who's already planning to buy tickets for it, like, Brittany, but, like, you know, that's not, like, summer season or winter award season. That's traditionally sort of a dead area Dumping for ground. movies and we should be careful because with all this talk about you know representation increasing in hollywood they are sending out movies like in the heights and like shang chi where they might be sort of sacrificed to the wolves in the sense of mm-hmm. yeah their box office is not going to be great because of what we're all dealing with but people will be able to say oh that person of color yep. movie didn't do well again well look how is it going to do we're coming out of a pandemic so i think i don't want people to get those two narratives confused yeah, no, that's a good point. Although, like Fast and Furious, I feel like Shang-Chi has Marvel armor on it in that people go to see Marvel movies no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. People will see Marvel movies no matter what. And I feel like because it's a Marvel movie, and it's the only Marvel movie in theaters post-Black Widow, yes. pre-Eternals, like, I think it's going to do fine. And this is probably the best way to segue from Shang-Chi to, to Loki, but, like, if the Marvel Disney shows are any indication, people talk about Marvel no matter what is going on right yeah yeah september is typically a dumping ground but you know what so was april and that's yeah. when endgame came out that's when avengers infinity war came out yeah. right like april was never the beginning of the summer movie season until marvel said you know what 
Yeah, it is. But that was that was a different strategy, dude. They were trying to kill the summer for everybody else. Basically, <laughs> they just said like summer starts when we say it does. Right. Well. Right. But, and but now they're saying like you know movies start when we say it does. Like I think right. it's, it's Marvel kind yeah, of like flexing. Marvel has just I think secured an audience so well because they have built up these characters. Like it is like a TV show that you've talked about. Like Marvel. Yeah, it is. The showrunner is Kevin Feige. That is very true. I believe that. And yeah, he has other people working on stuff, so he doesn't maybe have to be fully, deeply involved in every little thing. But it is the show that he has built for the last, like, what has it been? Like 12, 13, 14 years now? Yeah. He has built up this universe. People are coming to see it now because people trust in Marvel. Even if the Marvel movie is just okay, people still find some joy in it. So people are going to go see it, and I think Shang-Chi will do well, and even though I don't want it to, I think Black Widow will still do decent, you know? But I just think Marvel has just such brand recognition now that it's like, everyone is going to go see it. People are so looking forward to it. Like, I was surprised. My parents are looking forward to seeing Black Widow, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, we don't support her in this house. I hope what you say is true, and I believe it is true. I think it's a very interesting question, because again... Loki, Black Widow, characters that have already been introduced. Shang-Chi, unknown quantity, outlier in the Marvel Universe itself. Yeah, but so was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, so is. So it could be that scenario, I'm just saying. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy like six times. Like, I love the first one. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, sorry, I'm responsible for uh, James Gunn being where he is. <laughs> well, I think that's you really know, you true about people. Marvel, right? Like, it's it's... All of their properties were unknown quantities. That's what made them so unique. Mm-hmm. You know, we've yeah, we've but, talked so many times. Yes, but right? Shang-Chi like, more. <laughs> yes, more I, I would say... people know who Iron Man is than Shang-Chi. Yes, but that's because Iron Man now was popular. Uh, like, a lot of people didn't know who Iron Man was. Yeah, the in only... 2008, I don't know that right, how true that I'm is. Maybe I'm speaking from, from the Marvel nerd standpoint. I guess mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I, I totally Yeah, but you am. have to... And the big zeitgeist of everyone... DC was popular because everyone... Besides Spider-Man and X-Men, nobody knew who, you know, Iron Man was. And the only reason I even knew he was at the time was because I had that Marvel Ultimate Alliance game that my dad got me. <laughs> yeah. uh, when, that like, Ultimate Alliance has unlocked a lot for you. Yeah, like me, two it? years before, <laughs> you know. unlocked. So <laughs> that's how, like, I knew who Iron Man was because of that, that, that's how I knew who the other characters were, like, if I wasn't exposed. Yeah. So right. I feel like if you didn't grow up with certain things in Marvel, you don't know. But just the... To- Drive that point again. Shang Chi isn't playable in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games either. Yeah, I'm serious. he's D list. <laughs> but if you could argue Iron Man was C list at some point for someone, but right? Yeah, no, I mean that's fair. Shang Chi is not even among Marvel he's nerds. Yeah. Not in the Avengers not that very great. much. But that's what yeah. makes him more Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. It's much more a Guardians of the Galaxy scenario. G list mm-hmm. than even. So was Eternals too, right? Eternals yeah. and, and these are like Marvel is moving into a territory where like again they're flexing now i feel like the eternals are b minus list but that's we can make eternals we can make shang chi hit movies Mm -hmm. watch us right like i feel like that's where marvel is at this point let's try yeah and they have the power of disney behind them right and disney plus Mm -hmm. and taking into account all of the pent-up kind of energy going into the movies that fast and furious has unleashed i think by the time we get to september september is going to feel like a, a prime time to go see movies as much as oh no that's true too like there is no such thing as movie seasons anymore at this point it's yeah. just like movies will come out whenever a major studio says here's when we're dropping our franchise yeah and go see it i think that also people need to realize is that people are going to go see marvel because they want to and then in terms of other movies if people are going to be picky and choosy with movies just because of how expensive it is to go to the movies Movie theaters has upped their prices because, you know, they need money off of the interest fee now, too. Because before, it was mainly all just going to the movie, like, or the studio. But they had to add in that extra money because people were buying snacks. And that's why, like, going to the movies is expensive and people are only choosing, like, the big blockbuster movies. Like, of course. And there's something to be said for movies that don't have the streaming option Mm -hmm. and the only way you can see it is in the theaters. I think that's another reason F9 did so well because unlike a lot of the films that have been coming out, there is no streaming option. Black Widow will still have a streaming option, although you have to drop 30 bucks on Disney Plus to watch it. I think Shang-Chi is the first one that won't have that option. Yeah, Shang-Chi will be a first theaters only one. So I think, again, folks who've been chomping at the bit to see a Marvel movie will see Shang-Chi. I'm not worried about its box office. I'm just worried that 
people aren't going to go see Snake Eyes. <laughs> I'm going to see Snake Eyes. Let's try to do both, man. Again, don't have yeah, to do either both. or. Do both. We won't talk about Suicide Squad since um, clearly Britney doesn't like James Gunn. Okay, I, I know. Uh, I want to see it because I like Pete Davidson. There's Suicide, <laughs> Suicide Squad's but interesting. It looks fun. Like, it looks fun. It looks weird. But I know I have issues with James Gunn now, post first yeah. Guardians, but I don't know. My opinion is like, I think that the whole situation reveals something about this red herring we're calling cancel culture because it got kind of blown out of proportion at the time. And the actual result was, okay, James Gunn has his career delayed a little bit by a scandal and he's directing a big movie and he's producing then another really big movie for Marvel. So that's... He actually technically so has another movie for Marvel if you count the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. <laughs> Excellent point. Counting Christmas special a lot. So, so that's interesting. I mean... Well, the Suicide Squad trailer, I think it's like the brazenness of the obscure characters that are chosen is pretty amazing. Yes. <laughs> like, whatever you think about... Talk about, about like, G-List, right? Yeah, G-List. Way below Shang-Chi. We're talking about tiering the <laughs> characters. Okay, whatever Shang-Chi is, Polka Dot Man is three tiers below that. <laughs> Batman's villain, Ratcatcher, is three tiers below that. DC is also, like, doesn't have the armor that Marvel does, right? Like, because... Yeah, they don't. Even their biggest heroes, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman aren't guaranteed yeah. box office anymore so that's like dc's in a very different position i think that's what britney was saying earlier yeah the issue is that they did not give people time to come to love these new versions of these characters and now people they either are i think there's some people who are forcing themselves to like it just because it's their you know beloved dc characters and then there's people who don't like it because they didn't get to have time to spend with them there's some people who genuinely actually do like the new versions and feel like they had enough time with it and that's fine but i think there are some people who are clinging on too much to oh these are the characters that i loved and it's like no you have to realize when you have different people writing them and different people acting them they're kind of still they're in a way new characters they will always be somewhat new because it's different people's takes on them and that's i think the issue and we didn't get to develop that type of like bond with the characters like we have with you know steve and tony and you right. know everyone else like and it's so crazy to see how much people have done a like a 180 on thor there's a lot of people really didn't care for thor when he was first introduced people love loki but they didn't really care for thor but now mm. it's like you know i love thor i would fight someone who they try to hurt him like you know like before yeah. that wasn't my opinion i would protect loki but yeah. Thor, no. <laughs> he, he, did, he did grow on you though after repeated exposure <laughs> or he grew on me anyway well you know and this is a perfect time to segue to loki but i'm not going to take it because i did want to mention one more thing about the dc movies the other thing that kind of happened over the last week was dc has revealed a bunch of things for their flash movie that's filming currently and the Shazam costumes. We, we've seen now the entire Marvel family's, you know, new costumes, which is pretty cool. That's a lot of lightning bolts, man. Yeah. We've seen Supergirl's costume in the Flash movie with Sasha Kale playing Supergirl. It's very, uh -huh. uh, very much a different take on the character, but not that different because there is a version of Supergirl in the comics that, that the costume is very much inspired by. We got to see some spy footage of michael keaton as bruce wayne on set which is talking about like going back to versions of these dc heroes that people yeah. have affection for they're mm -hmm. taking it all the way back 30 years to the keaton batman so there's they're they're trying right they're trying to kind of like reset their multiverse of dc characters okay Brittany just said the thing about how you connect with the marvel characters over time the actors like i just thought about that a lot when we saw that set photo of Flash with the Michael Keaton in it because it really struck me that like from like an acting perspective I don't think any character has done anything with Batman since Michael Keaton really I mean not, in live I, in action my yes in live action live action yeah we are, right there's some good voice acting in live, live action in my opinion Bale Kilmer Affleck God bless them they all delivered some version of very handsome and kind of gruff but like you didn't really know anything about Batman since Michael Keaton, like, acted the shit out of that first mm -hmm. Batman movie. He gave him an inner life, and, like, you are worried about his state of mind. You just thought about what, what he was thinking more. Um, so, to me, that's, like, the most hopeful sign that could happen. Even, in, even though, you know, he's older now, but, of course, we have that Dark Knight persona that he will also act the shit out of. Um, mm -hmm. 
And I also want to say I like Supergirl's new look. I think it's yeah. a cool guy. <laughs> it, it is really cool. And I'm, I'm excited for The Flash. I know that we all have our issues with Ezra. But aside from that, I do think it's it's a great opportunity for DC to write the ship. Yeah. And embrace the fact that, yes, we have multiple versions of these characters. They, they're all real. They're all canon. And speaking of canon, we're not going to talk about whether or not Bruce Wayne, you know, uh, goes down on Catwoman. We're going to leave that for another podcast. <laughs> but, you know, I bet Michael Keaton does. He does. Anyway. I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman, too. I feel like he might be the next, like, you know, all right, this is good. Yeah. yeah. Well, but this, is, but so. this is what I mean. Like, this, they're really embracing the multiverse. And I've always said that's what they should have done from Jump Street. Like, if especially when they came out with a DC universe so close to, like, the Nolanverse, right? Like, that was... They had three movies, eight years of, like, very successful, very lauded world building that to Britney's point could have enhanced perhaps the DCEU right if like your Man of Steel sequel was going to involve a Batman who's like retired and you know tired of being Batman you've had that guy (laughs) eight years previous you know I feel like if Batman versus Superman was Christian Bale's Batman versus Henry Cavill it may have it would have had a little bit more stake a little bit more yeah extra to it because I think to your point like you have to get to know even though it's batman it's a different version of batman we've never met before and seeing a batman we've we've kind of like built that world and built that relationship had he come back and faced off against henry cavill maybe the dceu would be in a different place the other guys who have played batman like that's the thing it would have been a little bit more emotional stakes because like okay you've seen the superman before and now you've seen this batman before you care about you care on some level what's gonna happen like sad to say even if it was george clooney's batman people would still have like an actual stake in it because they know this character they've seen this character so that's the issue when you come in with like batman versus superman and now it's someone else playing him like you're not really gonna care what if batman the emotion involvement yeah you're not gonna care and then that's why people laugh at the why'd you say that name because it's like (laughs) you don't care about this Batman. Like, I like Why Ben Affleck. like that? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, that's the thing. And it's not even to, like, diss on DC because DC does have great characters. It's just, with these films, they did not put in heart in it where people care. And it, there's some people who, I think, oh, fake it. And then there's people Right, who, they just want to be, they, right. They've, they've kind of, like, sided with, like, Zack Snyder. We're just, you know, in their hearts, they made me think, like, I don't know if I like that movie, but... But I've already thrown my lot in with the Snyderverse, so. But again, multiverse is the best way out of this, right? Like, you just, Mm -hmm. it's all canon, right? Like, how we joke that the timekeepers are really just Kevin Feige, (laughs) you know? Like, just do the same thing with DC and not have to, like, fall to some strict, like, continuity to follow. And just let, that way you just let directors tell the stories they want to tell and make room for all the different versions. And I don't know, I, I feel like maybe it's just me growing as a fan because i used to feel that way like you know no there can only be one strict cohesive timeline but we've seen like that's fucking hard time is wibbly wobbly accept it right star wars has a hard time kind of like reconciling a lot of like the mass so they you know every once in a while we'll just have like okay these things don't count right like yeah marvel is falling victim to that and that's why they're doing the loki show it's like okay <laughs> let's yeah. let's get a handle on this and just say these are multiverses and these aren't and you know, I do want to get to Loki, but ultimately what I'm saying, multiverses are the answer. And I, I'm I'm just like Sylvie. I am very anti the TVA, and I just want to let the multiverse reign free. Mm-hmm. Yes. Speaking of, uh, this is a huge spoiler, so if you have not caught up to Loki episode 3, turn it off right now because I'm going to spoil it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. They're so, gone. It's so cool to find out the people working for the TVA are actually time variants. What I thought you were going to say, Brittany, is your... Enchantress has been basically confirmed, right? Because Sylvie is a version of the Enchantress from Young Avengers, right? Hmm. I... Were you guys speculating that that Lady Loki is really? A... I'm sorry, I didn't read Young Avengers. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a version of Enchantress okay. named Sylvie yeah, in the so comics. It. Oh well, that that pretty much locks it in, or at least that well. Yeah. I shouldn't say this in a series that's all about characters having variants of themselves. <laughs> 
well, why there's 96,000 enchantresses out there. <laughs> yes, too. exactly. That's... Nice in the Heights reference, by the way. <laughs> I suddenly got that like several weeks later after my very slow watch of In the Heights that you put that into yeah in the title of one of our last podcast episodes. Yeah, but that's, that's you know so if you're not familiar in the comics in the in like recent comics, this, she's not like a character from the 60s or anything, but. Yeah. There was a, a a girl named Sylvie who was just a regular person who was gifted powers by Loki, and basically became Enchantress two point oh. Yeah, there is. Um, I know that there's also a thing with Valkyrie too. That there is another version of Valkyrie that is not Brunhild. That uh, mm, yeah. they basically touch this orb thing and they have like the powers of Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the same thing than just the Enchantress version, right? But but the thing is, like, what I'm starting to kind of, like, wrap my head around is that the Disney Plus series might be essentially building to Young Avengers. I think they are. Because hmm. in, in WandaVision, they introduced her children, mm-hmm. Wiccan and... I always forget the fast guy's name. It's Speed? And... Speedy? No, I, that's not Speedy. Wiccan and... Oh, it is Speed, Whatever. I think. Fast guy. I think it's Speed, right? Yeah, I, I think know. it is Speed. But, like, they were introduced in WandaVision. They are members of Young Avengers. Falcon Winter Soldier introduced Patriot, uh, Zaya Bradley's grandson. Mm-hmm. Now we have Sylvie in Loki. Mm-hmm. Hawkeye's going to introduce Kate Bishop. Miss Marvel. I don't. Miss Marvel's not technically a young Avenger, but she's getting her show. She's kind of a part of. Isn't she like hang out with them at least? She hangs I out. I think with so. Them. I mean, Everyone she's definitely a Avenger young Avenger. I don't know if she's yes. part of the <laughs> Young Avengers, but she's definitely a young Avenger. Yes. You know, <laughs> maybe Miles scripted. Morales shows up in Spider Man No Way Out. Oh, he's you know? totally because I'm sorry, it's happening. Did you see that post with the fan who met Toby Maguire? They were like, "Hey, so are you in the new Spider Man?" He's like, "I'm not allowed to talk about it," and apparently he smiled <laughs> and winked. So. Toby, you're breaking your NDA. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's happening, guys. It's so happening. I'm so excited. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, there is definitely a case to be made that these ostensibly secondary characters in these Disney cool. shows could come together in a future Avengers installment and be the next phase of like what the Avengers movies will be, the MCU movies will be. Yeah, yeah. very possibly. Because they haven't officially said, oh, there's definitely going to be a next movie called Avengers, whatever, and it's definitely not going to have all those people in it, so they they want to be careful about introducing. Yeah. New Avengers. Give me Spider-Woman. There you go. There you go. Oh, one thing we didn't touch on in the Shang-Chi trailer, speaking of Disney Plus series, you know, the She-Hulk show is coming out, and they had confirmed that Tim Roth will be playing Emil Blonsky again in She-Hulk, and at the end of the Shang-Chi trailer... We saw the Abomination again, yes. who we have not seen in 14 years. <laughs> oh, what did yeah. you guys think of the Abomination showing up at the end of the Shang-Chi trailer? Well, trailer? he looks slightly better than the first yeah. time we saw him. He's not an <laughs> Abomination. <laughs> 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 and he definitely was hitting someone who is part of, like, the Doctor Strange yeah. peoples. I forgot I don't think called. it's Wong. People are assuming it's Wong. I don't think Wong, it's Wong, but yeah, I think it's definitely, like, some wizard. They're, yeah, they're sorcerers. in the Doctor Strange clan, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I just did what Anthony Mackie did. A sorcerer's a wizard without <laughs> a hat. The big three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some hatless wizard. Yes. Right? But, but you know, it, it makes sense to your point earlier about how Marvel movies are essentially a long TV show. Mm-hmm. If anything, this will probably lead into the She-Hulk show because, again, Emil Blonsky's in the She-Hulk show. Like, Tim Roth is confirmed yeah, and so is, to um, be in it. So. so is Mark Ruffalo. Yes. Is Liv Tyler? Are they ever gonna bring Liv Tyler back, though? With Liv Tyler, <laughs> that that would be a stretch. Wasn't she in the the? Am yeah, I, she was. Uh, am I she was. Uh, she, no, she, no, she was, she was in Betty Incredible Ross. Hulk. The oh, is she? No, she's is she the one with the Eric Bana? Am I really like? Ed, no, no, Eric Ed, Bana was Jennifer Ed, Connelly. Ed, Ed Burns okay. version. Yeah, Norton. And Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Sorry, confusing the Edwards. <laughs> I, I, sorry, getting the names wrong. But, but yeah, for for those of us who really follow this MCU thing way too closely it's interesting because that incredible hulk movie was always kind of the start of the marvel universe but not really Mm -hmm. because people hated it (laughs) right you know but this is sort of like saying yeah it's officially there around when iron man yeah started it all right incredible hulk is actually more responsible for mcu than iron man because that's the first time like iron man was the first one like whoever's in it is just in it sam jackson or not it was Incredible Hulk that had Tony Stark show up all of a sudden. It was like, wait, what? Yeah. These are actually connected? So that's yeah. really, yeah, that was people deal. like to forget about it, but Incredible Hulk really was the first right. MCU movie. 
Right. Yes. And we, we, we sort of gloss over it because obviously they changed actors and all this other stuff. It makes it confusing. But yes, they can perfectly well bring back the abomination. The original MCU villain in some case, even though a personal beef is they're, they really overplay the abomination in the other media, including the video games. They like too much <laughs> abomination. So I'm, I'm personally... Well, apparently he's just a cage but... fighter now, so he's not yeah, that he's powerful. Yeah, he's kind, of, he's kind of fallen <laughs> off. Man, poor guy. Well, and Incredible Hulk did have, you know, Thunderbolt Ross... Mm-hmm kind of yes you know, throughout the mcu and he was point. william hurt who was in that movie the other kind of theory going around you know showing abomination and you know baron zemo and falcon winter soldier is that perhaps they're also building a thunderbolts team so you could be getting young avengers versus the thunderbolts and one of the youtube channels i've been watching had pointed out that in the very first young avengers arc in the comics the villain they fought was kang the conqueror uh-huh. Who is Jonathan Majors and will be the next big bad in the MCU? So yeah, all signs point to so, a Young Avengers Thunderbolts. What do we know perhaps. about Jonathan Majors' like appearance? Is he just first starting off in Ant Man, or because there's been I mean, he's confirmed he's, in Ant Man. He's for rumors sure. He's gonna be in Loki, but I mean there was rumors you know, certain people were showing up and what do you call it? And they did it. So yeah, well, who who knows? I mean, there's definitely again those theory those conspiracy theorists on YouTube have pointed out that the one of the timekeepers, the middle one who's blue, mm-hmm. is drawn to look kind of like Jonathan Majors. So yeah. the the assumption is that one of the timekeepers is at least one of them is Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, but I want to talk about this variant thing because it's like. So let's get into that. Sorry, yeah, let's get into you, that. You totally segue out of it. I was like, I want to talk about the variants. <laughs> yeah, because in that scene with Sylvie, and she's talking about how she tries to get in people's minds, and she brings up like. The uh, TVA agent that I like, you know, her memories are hundreds of years old. She said hundreds. When that scene, like, that's why I'm like, okay, how far into the future or in the timeline is Sylvie from for her to say, like, you know, her memories were that old? Because that did not look like hundreds of years ago. It looked like it was like the 80s at most. Like, you know. Well, time moves differently in the TVA. That's right. But also... I want to know, are these variants people who, like, you could not easily return to their timeline without it causing another branch reality returning them so they don't get returned or they kept breaking the timeline and they don't like it. So now they're worked to, like, preserve the timeline and they don't even realize that they're doing it. Like, what is going on? Dope. Yeah. And she does actually use she does actually use the word enchant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they kind of yeah, that's right. That idea. I mean, it's all but confirmed she's the Enchantress, because when they named her Sylvie, it was, I think it's too much of a coincidence yeah, that... Yeah, you guys don't care yeah, about the they don't actually. They don't even have to say the... <laughs> no, but it's not that we don't care. It's... <laughs> don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know, pretty. <laughs> I need people Your to speculate with me. I, I can only <laughs> imagine that it will be addressed. Louis Tan would never do this to me. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm well, kidding. you'll just have to <laughs> rope Lewis Tan and replace one of us with him, <laughs> and I'll go be Lewis Tan. How about that? Brittany will do the, that in a heartbeat. That, Are you kidding? That, Don't that, give her that. That will be our body switch story. I, I'll, I, I can be Lewis Tan for a while. What yeah, did you no. think of episode three? I'm, I'm still not sold on the show. I'm sorry, guys. I know that you you uh, mentioned it last week. How after watching the first two episodes, I was still on the fence. Now, after a third episode, I am still on the fence. I'm still not completely I'm going to laugh if you sold. like the last half of the show, because you usually, like you have said, you talk about how you like all the first half or acts of, like, Marvel stuff, and then you don't really like the last act. So I'm going to laugh if, like, this is the reverse for you. It could be. <laughs> it very <laughs> like, much could be. Like, that would be really funny if that's what happens. But I, I think I like it because it just feels like Marvel and Doctor Who had a cute little baby. So <laughs> mm-hmm. that's where I'm at with it for yeah. me. Maybe yeah. that's what it is, because I've never been a Doctor Who guy. Oh, see, yeah, I love Doctor Who. A lot of people are saying, like, it, it's got Doctor Who vibes. and yeah, I mean, just right. Sylvie, the actor herself, is very Doctor evocative Who, of, yeah. of, of the person playing Doctor Who right now. They're similar types. Yeah. yeah. Jodie Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker. I haven't seen the yeah, newer Doctor Who, unfortunately. So <laughs> I've seen everyone but... Jody, unfortunately, not. Oh, really? Oh, well, she's she's just like Enchantress in that Marvel series. <laughs> Blonde and British and kind of magical. Yep, hers aired when we were in the process of moving, and just you guys know, if you have Direct TV and you move houses and you get a new dire- your your new box or whatever, they don't save all your old shows. So don't. I lost 
everything and I haven't watched it. That's why I haven't watched it. And I, it's one of those things where I'm like, eventually I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I keep saying I'll get to it. But then I'm like, hey, I'm going to start The Crown because, uh, you know, the new show. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, there, there's some variants of, of you that has watched this show. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you know what I think is where I'm still kind of struggling with the show is that, you know, I, I said five minutes ago how, like, continuity shouldn't matter. But that's it. But. I feel like what what I'm struggling with is that this version of Loki, this variant of Loki, doesn't ring true to me for whatever reason. Like, Tom Hiddleston's great. He's charming as all get out. But I don't know that this is that version of Loki where he would be... That you know, I don't know how also how much time he spent in the TVA in between episodes one and two, right? Mm-hmm. Like at the end of episode one, it's like, okay, you're going to join the team. In episode two, he's like poking his minutes in his at his cubicle, so he could have been working there for like years, for all we know. Yeah, time travels weird in the TVA, so that that now he's developed this kind of like sitcommy kind of personality. They also had to like kind of develop him up to where he was when we see him at pretty much sure, the beginning right, of Endgame. Right. So they had to make him watch this thing that made him sad and depressed. So he's really not Loki. Right Right after to me he doesn't even feel like ragnarok loki he feels like you know workplace sitcom loki and that's well that's kind of weird to me that's what you know what i mean too. yeah i know i know and that's he's it's working. i think you said this on the uh on last week's podcast. it's like it feels like a rick and morty show which it is because the guy who writes it is a rick and morty yeah alum. well the, rick and morty is literally like what if doctor who was an asshole and a drunk like that is what <laughs> rick and morty is right so like it's both i don't know I'm loving yeah. it. No, I'm I'm and I'm glad you are. And I'm not not loving it. I'm just You're not sold. I'm not a hundred percent there yet. Okay. That's an interesting question to raise there. I mean, I think a lot of people are rooting for Loki to turn towards the softer, even more heroic, good deed doing kind of Loki. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the that's where the conflict lies, both in audience expectations and what is a true development for that character. Also, big thing, they admit it and made it official in canon that Loki is bi. Or probably, I feel like the better word is pansexual, but that's, that's I feel like, a harder concept for people to grasp. So, <laughs> you know, they're going with him being bi. So that's great. At least we have, you know, an official main person in the Marvel Cinematic Universe who is, and it's not like, you know russo who's doing a scene and <laughs> talking about a date which like honestly you don't even realize he was on a date with a guy until he makes it like oh, i was on a date with man and you're like oh, okay <laughs> so on that note what's nerd popping guys oh well nerd popping for me i'm gonna start a fan cast campaign because fan cast campaign or we've, we've done some good fan casting on this show or or like you have keith like you <laughs> you you called andrew koji a storm shadow did you not at some point I did. i'm gonna start a fan cast campaign to get someone in Blackpink to be one of the Spider Women, you know which one? It can be all of them, or it could be just one of them. I think it's just a perfect match. They're all Korean, kind of good movers, slinky dancers. Jenny, I think, would be a great Silk. I would vote for GC to be Spider Woman, except she doesn't speak English that well. But you know, I mean, that that one's a bit of a stretch. But I mean, I, I'm gonna try to put that into the pop consciousness ear and uh, see what see what it brings. I saw your black pink in your Spider Verse Instagram posts. So we're yeah, gonna... that's the start of it. But Let's make that. Um, the... It's going to become a whole movement and a hashtag. Let's do it, Brittany. What's nerd popping? So kind of two things. I just watched Dracula two thousand yesterday for the first time. With Luke Evans? Is that Luke Evans? No, it's what? with Gerard Butler. He is. Oh, but see, what here's am I the thing. Of? I as a kid, I remember seeing trailers for this movie, but for some reason. In my head, Keanu Reeves was Dracula. So hmm. that was the other Dracula movie. Yeah. Where he was, well, he I've was seen a Dracula, Bram Stoker's. That movie was depressing. He is not a vampire. No, they did wrong not. by he's that Jonathan movie. Harkness, yeah. Yeah, they did wrong by that movie. So I don't know why. I but see the thing is I never saw trailers for uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I only saw for the Dracula two thousand. So I don't know where I got that he was like <laughs> Well I don't Keanu know. Reeves is immortal. I think that's where I you get it from. Probably yes, <laughs> um, but I really liked it. It was so fun, uh, really good. And then also, um, I saw the trailer for the Fear Street movie. That well, they're doing a trilogy, which I read the R.L. Stein books growing up in like <laughs> junior high and high school. So I'm really excited for that. And I just reordered like the Fear Street books, the ones that I could find 
because uh, it's like a hundred, no, it's like four hundred dollars for a partial set of the Fear Street what? books. Used. Yikes. Used partial set. <laughs> so I ordered the Them's newer precious books. I ordered the newer ones that are like basically um, it has a couple of the different books all in like one book. I'm really excited because Fear Street is really fun. So wow, yes, it's basically Arl Stein's like Goosebumps, but for you know teenagers, adults, and it's really fun. And I like the Fear Street saga prequel trilogy about how Fear Street became Fear Street. It's really fun. It takes place in the like. Salem witch trial eras and then yeah awesome spooky well speaking of paying amazing amounts of money for pop culture artifacts what's nerd popping with you Keith (laughs) I'm just kidding I'm messing with you I didn't pay for the cameo but apparently someone paid for a cameo of Tom Welling Mm. and in that cameo he mentioned that he and Michael Rosenbaum are working on a Smallville animated series what so that's pretty big deal because i've always said that there's no way they're ever going to get the actors back to do a live action smallville Mm -hmm. reunion but an animated series with them doing the voices would be definitely doable so he said he's going to do it but he also said it on a cameo and if you don't know what cameo is (laughs) cameo is an app that you can basically (laughs) hire celebrities to say whatever you want them to say Uh so it's possible that tom welling was hired to say yes i'm working on a smallville animated series so take it with a grain of salt if it's true Holy shit, that's that's the second thing I've wanted of all time after an Asian Snake Eyes is a Smallville animated series. But again, I don't know how true it is because he said it on a cameo. So Cameo is a weird source of information. It's <laughs> yeah, it's not the most uh, reliable source, let's say. So anyway, that's what's nerd popping. The, the, pers- the person who requests the cameo literally could have requested that he say that. That's what I'm saying. to make them right. happy. That's right. why right. you <laughs> can't take that it, as actual Are you news. saying it wasn't you who requested the I cameo? Did not. That Tom I did not. Okay. I did not. Okay. Fascinating. I did not pay all that money. Someone I, did. And now okay. that bug is oh, in the ear of that's hbo max or whatever excellent anyway that's the show Brittany. how can people find you on the internet you can find me on twitter at hi Brittany monet as well as instagram you can check out the naomi podcast which there's no episodes yet but at naomi podcast i'm so looking forward to doing that and that's kind of all i've got going on stay tuned for my tweets about crying about vampires and books that's what's <laughs> my twitter feed now mm-hmm dominic I'm at Dama, D-O-M-M-A-H, on Instagram or Twitter. And the hashtag is Blackpink in your Spider-Verse, right? <laughs> it's kind of long. Area. We're working on the hashtag. <laughs> Blackpink in your area. You can find me on Twitter at the real Chow, the underscore real underscore Chow, and on Instagram at real Keith Chow. Follow the podcast and the Nerds of Color at the Nerds of Color and go to hardknockmedia.com to find it and all the other podcasts, including my conversation with Sung Kang on Southern Fried Asian at hardknockmedia.com. Give us a like and a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere you get podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get YouTube content and smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell there. And merch, TeePublic, GoFundMe, Patreon, all that stuff. Send us money. And until next time. Did that whole thing start because Pfeiffer licks Keaton in Batman Returns? Or no? I know you said we weren't going to talk about it. <laughs> But I literally don't know where it starts. I, I seem to remember Pfeiffer actually licks Keith. That, that, that happens. Turn. The whole thing about Batman doesn't go down is because Harley Quinn, the animated series, the writers were interviewed ah. and said they had written a scene and DC was like, that can't happen. Heroes don't do that. Heroes do do that. Yeah, that's what makes you a hero. Yeah, that's, that does make you a hero. That's interesting. <laughs> I just said, I was curious. I, I really didn't know where, where that had originated. <laughs>